My God. Television really has become boring, hasn't it? You're the weakest link. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. Now, I've got to be reasonably quick here because I've still got to prepare my tea and that for lectures at 2. But, this morning, what arrived in the post? Da -da -da -da! I got one of these. And not for a bad price either, because normally these things go for about 50 quid or more. My bargain hunting that I learnt off mum has once again paid off. About 20. Which is a reasonable price, I'd say. It works. It's got. It's found two keys which are dead so far, which is the E and 5 key. So, need to look into that. This thing's built in rechargeable battery as well. Still works. I don't know how this is possible, but it does. So, the plan is at some point, soonish, crack it open, check the condition of the battery because we don't want it to be leaky. Uh, if there's any corrosion anywhere, clean it off and maybe find a replacement for the batteries if they are leaky and horrible. If not, they can stay. Other than that, even with an expansion. Bargain! And power supply, which is currently in the bag. As I took it off to show the disability of our layer I like showing things that I get off. <laughs> I always have. I always liked it when you got to bring in your stuff in primary school to show people the stuff, toys and stuff you had. There was always someone in the class who had something better. <laughs> but mm, with vintage computers, that doesn't really apply anymore. These things are awesome. I love them. But yeah, it's got built-in printer. Although the cartridge needs replacing. Listen to I don't know how to get it to print yet to it. And I also need to make it a roll of paper because there is no roll of paper in it. And see if it still prints. Hopefully it does. And here's the tape eject, which is a little like cartridge module and whatnot. And it's got a proper keyboard. And it's from roughly around the same era as the Husky, original Husky. Although this one has copyright 92 on the basic. So... Maybe it's not the first. Who knows? Maybe it's a later revision. That is a mystery. I do not know. Either way, it's one of the machines that has the claim to fame of at least being one of the first laptop computers, or what is known as a laptop. The clamshell came later. I think in about the mid-80s when the sort of classic laptop design that is still in use today came along. And also, just for the hell of it, run. My little basic program I created for it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. We'll get some proper more detailed videos of this in the time ahead, as and when I have time. Thanks for watching. I might as well bang this on the end of my Epson HX20 video. My routers have arrived. Cisco routers. I can't remember the model number. I'll probably do a video on them as well at some point. It's like Christmas, only better. It's computer equipment. Righty then. As you can see, my routers are set up and I've configured it with two switches. We've got the Cisco Catalyst 3000 at the bottom and the 3 com one at the top, which I was able to actually get into and it's got 192 board rate. So, I need to configure these routers. I will need to probably do some config in here. I will do some tests, see if I can ping through or not. I need to look up the command system that this uses though, because it's different to the Cisco ones. Uh, I need to configure all these, sort out their IP addresses, give them DNA. Give, oh God, brain, think sort out the IP addresses of the Ethernets and that, the serial and then uh, make make a note of it and then um, play around and 
access my Raspberry Pi through them. That'd be a good way to do it, put Raspberry Pi in one of these and then connect laptop here and goes all the way through the serial, which I think their max is 4 megabits per sec. But yeah. I'll leave the configuring for tomorrow or sometime in the days ahead when I'm not feeling utterly knackered. <sighs> I just got the hardware set up. It's a nice easy job to do, it's just plugging in a few cables. Because the real magic, like anything in the computers, is all in the software. And all these essentially are are computers with specialist hardware. Thanks for watching. This should get your geek juices flowing. I have my Raspberry Pi SSH'd. Excellent. And it's not only just for a basic configuration. I've gone. We've got computer. I'm not going to explain how I did the config of these because this is because the these are complex Cisco routers. But my Cisco router arrived. But computer goes in here, then that goes to router number one, which I've called Top EEPROM. And you can see it's console config cable there. Then that links through to the router, bottom EEPROM is its name, using the serial running at 4 megabits per sec. Then that goes out the Ethernet interfaces into the Cisco Catalyst 3000 switch, which then goes all the way up under there to my Pi, which is currently logged on. Hee hee! Success! So, it'd be interesting to see if the GUI actually works through Putty. Shall we try it? Why not? That uh, A R T X. Well, it does, but only displayed it there, so we have remotely started the interface. And using system, uh, and then we can do Control C, and it brings us back to our thing. Brings it back to that. Excellent. So it doesn't work. Bring us the GUI on this end, but we can do all the other admin stuff through the command line. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I might do a little tutorial about how I did this. And also I'd like to say thanks to everyone for advice on the display setup, but despite trying absolutely everything, it still refuses to display in the method I want in a 4.3 ratio. Despite having tried absolutely everything everyone suggested, which is Odd, really, that it didn't do anything. Most things inhibited no change whatsoever, which was weird. So, on that bombshell, but also a successful one, it's good. And also, it's given me, and also, I've used a default static root for these. It's all static IP addressing. I don't have a DHCP server hooked up to do to dish out IP addresses. I could create one though, and then link it to one of the switches. <laughs> but that's a task for another time for now thanks for watching oh yeah new keyboard I may upload the video of what happened to the old one but to make a long story short it basically died thanks for watching a raspberry pi running on remote desktop <laughs> you can't deny that's not awesome as hell and there's the stuff connecting it all might as well show you again because I'm just so proud of this setup. Awesome. There's a few minor things I still need to configure. But apart from that, all done. And there's the pie right there. <laughs> oh, that is cold. And if we get the thing to pop up. There we go. It's even got its toolbar. Thanks for watching. Might as well let this just run out of memory card space. Ah, we get to set this up so I can do it across campus. Right, just to add to the complete nerdiness, the whole pile of this, 
We have Wireshark, and watch what happens when I do stuff. We get destination. The 1.2 is the Raspberry Pi. The 0.2 is my laptop. And I'm just doubling checking that, and that is correct. Because this is essentially terminal, but it's all SSH and TCP. I'm going to check the TCP packet. If one had stayed still long enough for me to click it. There we go. Transmission control protocol. Ah, that's not so much encrypted, but the main part of the SSH session, which this seems to be predominantly using the packets of, is encrypted. So, yes, Raspberry Pi for a remote desktop seems secure, at least from an SSH standard to the SSH level of security. Ah, well, you can tell I really do enjoy this stuff, can't you? Oh, we've got some weird shit going on there. But anyway, rather interesting, I reckon. In fact, I find it interesting. Thanks for watching.